Once upon a time, there was a kind and wise and beautiful witch who lived in the forest with her familiars, and her life was peaceful and happy until a fucking witch hunter broke into her cottage and dragged her out and fucking murdered her, and now she's dead. But if you get revenge and kill him and bring his eyes to her corpse within a week, he'll come back to life, or so you've heard. Even if it doesn't work, at least he's dead. So for your characters, you are going to be a cute woodland animal, one of her familiars. You'll roll a d10 to decide which animal you'll be, and you're gonna be given four traits. Clever, fierce, fly, and quick. When you're trying to perform an action or do something that might be a little challenging, we're gonna use one of those skills. And your animal will have points in those different traits based on whatever animal you get. You'll also have learned a spell from your witch. Every animal will get a spell. Nothing flashy, just a little bit of hedge magic that the witch used to help around the house. So let's start there. We'll pick our characters and spell. So if you want to roll a d10 for your animal and then a d10 for your spell, I'll be able to tell you what you are. Uh, my animal number is one. So you are a fox. Fox it. If you want to take these numbers down, your clever is two, your fierce is two, your sly is one, and your quick is one. All right, so two, two, one, one. Yep. All right, and uh, my spell was six. The spell you have is Make Flame. Make Flame. Yes. All right, burn it all down. Got it. Okay. And your character, Josh? Uh, my animal was three. So you are a toad. Nice. Uh, you have a clever of one, a fierce of zero, a sly of two, and a quick of one. My spell was eight. You have a spell of plant growth. Man, I... All right, so you make some very dry weeds, and I'll light them on fire. Pretty much. So you guys can talk to one another and potentially other animals, but you cannot talk to humans. When you try to do something, I'll ask you to roll a d10 and you'll add the most relevant trait. So if I say this, this is going to run off of clever because what you're asking to do is require some wit. You'll add that to your d10 roll. I'll tell you based on the complexity of the task that you're trying to accomplish, what the challenge rating or what the number is you need to beat to accomplish that. Depending on the situation, I might tell you there's going to be danger present. As things get more intense, the situations will become dangerous for you guys. If you fail a roll and there's danger involved, you get one point of danger, and that will accumulate. So if you fail again, another dangerous situation, you'll get two points of danger. If at any point you roll your dice and you are equal to or under your danger score, you've essentially lost. You're out of the game. You're either dead, trapped, lost, or captured based on whatever situation you failed in. If you use your magic, your spell, there is always danger present. So I'll ask you to roll, and there will always be a danger when using your spell. That's about it. Do, do you guys have names, or are you just going to go by Fox and Toad? I think Fox and Toad works. It almost sounds like we're like a buddy cop movie. Yeah, I like that. Fox and Toad. Fox and Toad. I don't like this Toad, this whole situation. <laughs> don't smell right. We will start with you guys. Your witch has just been dragged out from her house, out into the front garden, and murdered before your eyes. And you've seen the witch hunter take off down the path. Well, what is it that you guys are doing? Autumn Toad, let's go! And I, like, put my head down to, like, try and have Toad, to, like, hop onto my head. Yeah, I fuck with that. All right, hold on. I'm going as fast as a fox can go. Okay, we'll say the window's open a little bit. You can kind of, like, scurry right out the front window towards the garden. You're outside. We'll call it dawn. So the sun's just breaking, and your witch is out on the ground, covered in blood, and you guys are in the garden. All right, Toad, which way? Come on, Toad. Left. You're my eyes. Oh, right. No, you're my eyes, Toad. Let's go. Yeah, you know I can't see. Everything's a blow when I'm running this fast. Do I know which way? Give me a give me a clever roll, Toad, to see if you can determine which way you think the witch hunter went. This will be pretty basic. Well, actually, this will be simple, because it just happened right before your eyes. So we'll need a six. Yeah, six plus one is seven. Perfect. You know that from the witch's house, he went west towards the village. What's the name of the village that your witch lives on the outskirts? Chuck, what's the name of the village, Chuck? Chuck, quick, we need the name of the village. Murfreesville. Yeah, it's Murfreesville. Murfreesville Village. We'll bring you in, Chuck. Yeah, don't worry about it. Fox and Toad <laughs> are out there deciding on which way the hunter went, and then we'll have Chuck's character going out just behind them, like trying to catch up with them. So, Chuck, um, we're playing a game called The Witch is Dead. It's an RPG about murder. So you'll be playing one of the witch's familiars, so if you roll me a d10, I'll tell you what your animal is. That's a four. So you are a spider. You have a clever score of two, a fierce score of zero, 
No. A sly score of three. Sly three. And a quick score of one. All right, cool. How is a spider more sly than a fox? I don't know, but if you roll me another d10, Chuck, you'll have learned one spell that the witch has taught you. Uh, what's three? Speak human, so you can speak directly to people. <laughs> That's not creepy at all. Uh, so I like to think that while Toad and I are on the hunt, we're going after this guy, I just nonchalantly or very quickly run through Spider's web, and so now Spider's just with us. Sounds good. I got taken along, uh, like, head-level webs, and I was still making it, and then... Fox just goes right through it. So, like, I'm on his back now. So, Toad is on Fox's head, and Fox has asked Toad, which way did the witch hunter go? You guys are going west towards Murfreesville, and Fox books it through a broken piece of the stone wall to the garden where Spider had made a web, and Spider is now being carried by Fox and is, like, blowing in the wind. Toad, catch Spider after the happenings. Uh, uh, the, the, the witch is dead. Ding dong. That fish owed me money. It's okay. We got a way of bringing her back. Excellent. You guys travel down the road towards Murfreesville. You kind of break the tree line. There's Murfreesville at the edge of this lake. Yeah, there's just the town happenings you can see. It's sort of cresting over a hill where you guys are, and down the hill by the lake, you can see the village. Am I like close enough to go and like get a drink from the lake? You guys could go down to the lake, sure. I was gonna say, before that, where are all the buildings in relation to each other? So there's gonna be like a cemetery and then like a church. There's gonna be like a government office, you know, all that kind of jazz. Where are they in relation to each other? It's pretty tightly packed together, and there's a stone wall surrounding the village, and like a gate with a guard. There's a guard there. Well, I lose focus for just a little bit, because after all that running, I'm very thirsty. I'm going to go take a, a trip away. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hop off a uh, fox and, and climb over the walls, like away from sight. Like, I'm going to stick to the shadows. Okay. And uh, I'm going to make my way towards the uh, chapel. Okay, so you guys are going to split up. Spider, you're going to climb over the wall? Yep. I mean, climbing is pretty easy for you, considering you're a spider. I have eight legs. Come on. Yeah, give me a, <laughs> a sly roll as you try to kind of not be seen. That's a five. Okay, so you climb up and over the wall. There's a gentleman on the other side of the wall as you're coming down, and he, and he spots you. Oh, a spider! And he, like, tries to take a swat at you. Um, at this point, can I be done my drink and see that there's now an opening in through the gate because he's preoccupied with the spider? Um, yeah, sure. All right, Toad, now's our chance. Hold on tight. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to just try and book it around this guard that's now preoccupied with Spider. While also, like, giving Spider a wink as, like, a good job. You're doing great. And, Toad, you're going to hang on to Fox? I'm going to try. Okay. Spider gives the approximate of a middle finger to both of them. <laughs> okay. Um, Toad, give me a fierce roll. We're, we're going to do a fierce roll from Toad and a quick roll from Fox and see how that pans out. And that's going to be, um, that's going to be basic. Okay, well, I got a seven. Okay, that is exactly what you needed. So you you hold on. Your back legs are like flying in the wind. You're like a little frog flagpole. Fox, what's your quick roll? Uh, my quick roll was 10. Nice, okay. So a bolt of lightning. <laughs> yeah, you skulk in. I mean, no one even bats an eye. And I'm just going to tell Toad, like, oh, man, it's really, it was really smart thinking of a spider to cause a distraction like that. <laughs> yeah, so this guy's trying to swat at Spider. Spider, if you give me a quick roll to see if you like if you can get out of the way, and there will be danger involved here. D10, please don't kill me. Ah, it's a six. Perfect. You kind of like are able to weave in and out of the cracks of the stone wall and evade this massive manhand that's coming to squash you. I and mean, you're able to make your way all the way down to the ground. So you guys are all in town. What do you do next? I'm going to the church. Well, wherever they put all the dead bodies. Uh, the, the guy that was trying to squash Spider as well, you hear him get back to the conversation that they were having. It was, it was two guys, and they're just like, oh, yeah, that, that fucking witch hunter. Uh, what a bastard. I think, wish I could smack him in the head. Uh, and you're going to you're gonna try and find a church? Yeah, so something close to the, by where the cemetery is. Give me a clever roll as you kind of scout around town to, to see if you can find a church. I got an 11. Right in the center of town, there is very clearly a church. It has all the distinguishable makings and markings of a church. You also notice that the roads in town are, every brick is perfect. Every line is perfect. Every plant following the road is, is perfectly planted. And the colors of the plants make a perfect rainbow fading between colors. And the stonework of every building is, is perfectly laid out. There's not a single flaw about anything visually in this town. Everything seems perfect. Guys, this place is creepy. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> so, do lock. <laughs> As you approach the church, Spider, the uh, church bell actually begins to ring with perfect intonation and rhythm. 
I want to climb to the shrubbery. <laughs> Fox and Toad, where, where are you guys at here? Are you guys following Spider, or do you have your own kind of machinations or plans here? Uh, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm act all action. Toad's the brains. <laughs> That's why he's on there. <laughs> yeah, can, can we uh, head towards, like, the town center? Sure. And uh, the church is kind of near the town center, too. So you guys will be in the same area. You guys are going to kind of peruse around town, the center of town, like keeping an eye out for anyone that looks like they might be a witch hunter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, he's kind of looking around. Can I like try and get like a scent going? And I'm not a dog, but like, I don't know, Fox kind of kind of similar. Give me a clever roll as you try and pick up on the scent. Um, you're able to get a, a whiff of the, of the whiff hunt, uh, the whiff hunter. Yes. Ah, uh, yes, the whiff hunter. <laughs> <laughs> so you're able to kind of get that scent off of the witch back at home. So you can give me a clever roll to see if you can pick up on anything, maybe get back on track. Ooh, that. Uh, even with that plus two, that's a, that's only a four. You don't quite have it. Um, you're sniffing around and you think you have it. There's a guy, a street food service guy, and he's selling ye old hot dogs on the side of the road. That seems to have caught the attention of your uh, nose. Uh, Toe, we got time for hot dogs? I'm going to try and, using my tongue, snag a hot dog. <laughs> are you trying to just get a hot dog or are you trying to be sneaky about it? Yeah, I mean, as we're, like, going by it, I'm trying to, like, just swipe it real quick. We'll go slide. Oh, that's an 11, baby. Wow, okay, yeah. So you actually, you've gotten two hot dogs, one for each of you. Ah, <laughs> uh, Toad, you never failed me. And luckily, the second one that you were able to get is covered in fruit flies. <laughs> <laughs> how, do think, how do you think Spider's doing? Toad and Fox are walking on the center of town, trying to get a, a good whiff, see if they can find this guy. Um, they're munching on hot dogs in the local fair. Spider has managed to find himself into a bush or shrub outside of the church in town. These shrubs are perfectly trimmed, perfectly manicured. There's not a leaf out of place. Spider, what have you got going on? What are you thinking? Well, the first thing he's going to do, because it's so perfect, he's going to adjust one of the leaves away from all the rest. <laughs> <laughs> And then he's going to infiltrate into the church. He, he wants to get into the sanctuary. The equivalent of tabernacle would be. And he wants to get, like, onto the ceiling. And since church is starting, he wants to listen. So you, you climb in through one of the panes of stained glass that's open at the bottom. And this congregation is just about to get underway. And you see everybody in the pews are wearing similarly colored clothing, similar attire. It's like they all woke up this morning and knew exactly what they were going to wear. They all coordinated. Definitely do lock. Yeah, everybody's hair is perfectly combed over, perfectly done. Gentleman giving the, the sermon at, at, at the front of the church, he's just talking about, All hail Baron Von Trump, for he is great, he is glory, he will keep us safe. The Baron of Murfreesville, but fuck that witch hunter. And and, and the congregation goes, hey! I, I mean, I feel like no one's going to care if we take out this witch hunter. Possibly. What are the limitations on my spell for talking here? Because I kind of want to whisper to the uh, preacher, create like a, a ceremony, a service for the witch to bring out the witch hunter to dispel him or something like that. So I feel like this could potentially be two rolls. You're going to have to roll for your spell, maybe sly or maybe clever as you're trying to coerce him to do the bidding of a strange voice he's hearing for the first time. This is your god. So first some magic. Let's see if I even make it. There's danger involved with that. Magic. What did you get? A nine. Okay, perfect. All right. And so for Sly, that's a four. The spell works and the preacher uh, hears you. And what is it that you're saying to him? To get rid of the abominable witch hunter, we must create a ceremony for the witch herself at the side of her grave so we can finally banish him. Like a ceremony, a feast, whatever. It's just like making a party. So your spell roll is a success, but your sly roll would have failed. So what happens is the preacher hears the voice in his head, and as he's speaking to the congregation, he's saying all this stuff, hail the Baron of Murfreesville, this and that. He says the first part, which is, we must kill the witch hunter. We must hunt him down. He's like, wait, 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 wait. I didn't say that. We hate the witch hunter, but he must live, for the Baron loves him so. And the Baron is great. The Baron of Murfreesville, all hail. And everyone goes, hey. So, so wait, wait. Everyone hates the witch hunter? But the Baron loves him. Oh. What are they, like, brothers? And everyone loves the Baron. I have a new target. <laughs> or everyone obeys the Baron, I should say. Uh, okay. We'll leave Spider in this moment for the time being. Toad and Fox, as you guys are pacing outside, we'll, we'll just do a clever roll for both of you as you guys are looking around for signs of witch hunter -y. Oh, that's better. That is a nine. Uh, that is a four. 
Okay. Toad is covered in hot dog. There's hot dog bits all over Fox's head. No. There's crumbs no. everywhere. And Fox goes, wait. Um, and you see a gentleman leaving the church. His head is like cloaked as if he's trying not to be seen. Uh, quick question. Yes. We have seen other people in this village, correct? Yes, just walking around. There's the hot dog guy. Those other people, did they look like they were dressed exactly the same as the hunter? Or is the hunter dressed uh, uniquely? No, they were all kind of dressed very similarly. Similar attire, similar colors. I don't think the witch hunter was overtly standing out. All right, well, I can't imagine the witch hunter was just sitting in the church as they were all bitching about him. Um, but this is the only lead we got. <laughs> so, uh, Toad, Toad, look. That guy's suspicious, you think? Mm-hmm. Sorry, you're busy eating your hot dog. I shouldn't bother you. You're busy. Yeah, it looks pretty suspicious to me. Yeah, hold on to your hot dog. Here we go. And I'm going to start following him. We're going with it. Hopefully, Spider's <laughs> found something useful. He, he seems to be heading towards a larger building compared to most of the rest of the village. It is very ornate in its decor, intricate carvings and ornate sculptures and the like, like a capital building or like a headquarters building. I want to stay like close enough to him so that if he does talk to somebody or says anything, that we can hear him. Okay. If you're a fox, you have big fucking ears, man. You, you can hear pretty good. Uh, that, <laughs> what would you say? You would follow him all the way to the front door of the building, and he's going to enter the building. Oh, he just enters? Yeah, he's just going to go right in the building. I mean, foxes are pretty small. Hmm. Yeah. They're like a big cat. Can I just glide in there just as the door's like closing behind him? Sure. Give me a sly roll. And this is going to be challenging. All right, Toad. Hold on tight. All right. That is going to be a seven. You're skulking behind this gentleman as he's walking, kind of weaving in and out of bushes. And he goes up to the front door of this building. You have this idea of running in there kind of behind him before the door closes. He opens the door, he goes in, and just at the last second, you beeline it towards the door and you just miss it. It closes and you you smack your head into the front. Mm -hmm. You all right, Toad? Yeah, and, and Toad goes flying off of your head uh, onto the ground beside you. Oh, Jesus. Uh, so is that a danger point since I failed? No, I would tell you when there's danger present. Okay. Uh, Toad, there's got to be another way in here. Spider, what are you doing in there? Are you you're still hanging around the church? or With my failure, I'm going to actually go on, on top of the church and look for where the barrel would live. Probably the most ornate building around. So Your attention would probably be turned to the same building that Fox and Toad are currently outside of it. It looks like a building of prominence where like decisions are made. Can, can I quickly make a little web hang glider to like balloon myself towards that way instead of just crawling? We'll do a clever roll and there will be danger involved. Oh, definitely. We'll make this challenging <laughs> as well. So that's 12. Wow. Holy shit. Okay. Yeah. You quickly fashion this web hang glider and you take four of your eight legs and put them above your head and sort of wait for the perfect gust and you're able to catch a little wind and you sail right down on a sculpture beside Fox and Toad outside of the building. What's up, lads? How's it going? Oh, Spidey, you're alive. I'm always alive. I got more legs than lives. <laughs> so yeah, the three of you are currently outside of this building. Is the weather relatively nice? Yeah, it's a pretty nice day out. All right, um, uh, can we? Can I like look around? Is that like an open window? Mm, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I was gonna climb up to like third story, or whatever, trying to find myself into like a bedroom or whatever, like a study. Yeah, you can easily find a. There's there's a window at ground level, you know, close to the front. I was gonna climb the building itself to get up to the third floor. Okay. I mean, if you want to start from the top, we'll start from the bottom. Yeah, yeah, I'll go from the top, and uh, you guys can start from the bottom. Meet in the middle. Good luck, Spider. I'm going to hop in that, that open window on the first floor. You're not even going to look in the window. I can't. You just go right through. <laughs> I, I mean, I really can't. I can either hop in the window. And he's just leaping, completely faith-based. Right, because I, <laughs> I can't see it from down where I'm standing, right? That's true. It, it is a little too tall, even if you're standing on your hind legs. And Toad, you're going to do the same? or I mean, I'd like to look in the window if I could before I get crazy. Toad can get some height. You can kind of like jump up and catch a glimpse. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Toad, you kind of like get some spring and bounce up and you're able to, to catch a glimpse. It takes you a couple times to really get a good reconnaissance, but you see like a main foyer area. It looks very reminiscent of a library. Like there's lots of bookcases and lots of books. There's a big fireplace. You catch a quick glimpse of this hooded figure rounding the corner into another hallway out of sight. Ooh, okay. What'd you see, Toad? What'd you see? We have to get in. Oh, yeah. Hop on. And I put my head back down. Yep. And uh, as soon as he's on, I hop through the window and say, good luck, spider. 
one last bit of note. You were seeing um, this gentleman in the hooded figure kind of being semi-destructive as he was walking in there. As he's rounding the corner to go into the hallway, he takes like a fistful of books off of the bookshelf and just kind of pulls them onto the floor behind him just in sort of a dickhead fashion. Oh yeah, this is definitely the hunter that no one likes. <laughs> you guys are gonna just jump right through the window in there? Uh, yeah, after, after our Toad says that, does Spider change his mind and come with us or...? No, 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 I'm still doing my thing. Okay, you do your thing. Yeah, you guys hop through the window. Give me a, a fierce roll. This is going to be kind of like strength, a coordinated, dexterous like um, activity as you try and jump through the window, not fully knowing what's exactly on the other side, trying to let land okay. That's going to be six plus two, eight. We're going to give some danger to this as well. Okay, but that that is an eight altogether. So you jump right in and you land on an end table beside a bookshelf in there. You're in this big open foyer lobby area. All right, Toad, you, you saw where you went. Where, where am I going? Uh, uh, down the hall. Uh, the hall? All right, down the hall. So you jump off the bookshelf, and you're sort of flinging low to the ground and heading towards this hallway. And Spider, you're climbing up the building towards a window on the upper level. Correct. Being a spider, that's not a problem. You find a window, perfectly fine. Actually, give me a quick roll as you are little and you're trying to get up there pretty quick and get safely inside the building. We're going to add danger to this as well. Oh, shit. Oh, well, I got a four. You are scaling this building. You find a window, and you're like, that's the one. And you're, like, running up to go towards this window, and you're on, like, the lower-pitched roof. And a crow lands right in front of the window. Oh, fuck, my greatest week, the birds. He sees you and kind of cocks his head, and he begins to sort of come after you, pecking at the ground. Well, good thing buildings have four sides. I'm out of here. Fighter, you had one point of danger at this point. And I'm not sure if anyone else has failed the danger roll yet but just keep track of how many points of danger you have. Okay, yeah, yeah. If you roll equal to or lower than the amount of danger you have, bad things happen. I'm good. Yeah. So this crow <laughs> is sort of pecking at you, at the spider on the roof, as you're trying to evade him and, and get inside. What do you want to try and do in this situation? Well, I'm going to pull Michael Jackson and 360 my way out of there. <laughs> oh, I'm touching myself. <laughs> I'm gonna try to find, you know, the other side. There's plenty of windows on a building. There must be something I can get into that isn't guarded by crow. You're gonna attempt to outmaneuver this crow. Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna book it backwards so, like, it won't have like anything to stand on to get to me. Okay. At least make it difficult to actually to get to me. All right. Give me another quick roll, and we're gonna add danger to this as well. But we're gonna lower the challenge to it too. It was just basic. Yeah, that's a two. I. <laughs> Wow, if you rolled a one, you would have died right now. Jeez. <laughs> so you now have two points of danger, and this crow, you are in its boot. What, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm going to bite this motherfucker. Right on the top. <laughs> okay, yeah. Hopefully I'm a poisonous species. I have no idea what I am. <laughs> I, I imagine you're a relatively large spider if the witch was using you as kind of like to help out. At the very least, you have some decent-sized fangs, you know. <laughs> Eat me, you bitch. <laughs> Give me a, a fierce roll. And again, given the situation, Spider, this is also going to have danger. Oh, cool. Ted. <laughs> so you bite this crow. You're able to sink your fangs into this crow. And he spits you out with a flick of his neck. And you kind of like smack up against the open window. And the crow flies away. So I imagine you smack against the window and sort of slide down onto the floor. From yeah. I go. <laughs> yeah. You are now on the floor of what appears to be a human guest bedroom. I want to get to the ceiling so I can actually see everything. Not a problem. You're able to scale the wall, and you're now upside down on the ceiling of this guest room. We'll say there's actually a maid in there, or a, a, a cleaner in there, and she's sort of dusting and making sure everything's nice and neat and orderly. I want to get into a shadow as quickly as possible because she's my worst enemy. She <laughs> notices that one of the bed linens is like slightly folded and she is like in shock and in awe. She rings this bell, three more maids come up and they're all like gasping at this folded bed linen. One of them trembling, reaches over, fixes the corner of this bed sheet and then they all sort of wipe their brow. Like they just like- Diffuse the bomb. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fox and Toad, you guys are heading down towards this hallway. It's a pretty long hallway. You're not sure exactly which door. I'm going to try and sniff him out again now that I've hopefully caught another whiff and there's no hot dogs in sight. Give me a clever <laughs> roll. Oh, damn, that hot dog vendor's in here too. <laughs> That's a four. <laughs> there's an open window right by the hot dog vendor. <laughs> Yeah, the hot dog vendor little uh, thing is on wheels, so he's, he's now parked in front of the uh, state house. Classic. 
<laughs> You're getting a scent of hot dogs and old books. But three people walk into the front and they're sort of gibbering and jabbering amongst themselves. And they're saying a lot of the same murmur you've heard around town. Oh, yeah, that stupid, what an asshole, that stupid witch hunter. I, I can't believe, you know, we have to, we, we have to, uh, you know, listen to him and, and do what he says. You know, this stupid Baron loves this guy so much. I don't even know why, why he loves this guy so much. You know, and they're, they're sort of bantering amongst themselves. And they're like, well, I guess, guess we'll go to this meeting now. They're heading towards the hallway, but behind you guys. Okay. I look up at Toad, just like kind of looking up on my head. Like, uh, I mean, I guess that's the only lead we got, huh, Toad? I, I think so. All right, you're the boss, Toad. On, on, on we go. Oh, jeez. They're rounding the corner towards the long hallway you guys are in, and you guys are currently in the center of the hallway. So if you guys don't move, they're going to essentially see this box and this Toad in the middle of the hallway. Is there like an end table or something I could like hide under as they pass by so that I can just walk behind them and follow them? Yeah, we'll say there's a decorative suit of armor, you know, on one side of the hallway. Uh, I'm going to do the classic, like, I'm going to just scurry up the leg of it and then, like, <laughs> go up to the top and, like, the visor will, like, pop up just a little bit to show a fox head and then drop back down. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a fly roll. Do I get a bonus for cartoon annex? Um, no, sorry, I don't think so. But we're going to keep this sense of danger as well. Mm, kind of sly. That's a five plus one. That's a six. Mm. So the roll of seven, because it was basic. Six is simple, seven is basic. We'll say that you make it into the suit of armor, but it's sort of the armor becomes uh, unsteady as the weight shifts inside of it, and the suit of armor falls over onto the ground in front of these three individuals. They stand back and gasp. One, at the pure disorder of what is happening. Two, they just yell, um, it must be the witch coming back to haunt us. I knew that witch hunter had it wrong. <laughs> they start sort of panicking. One of the maids runs down and she's gasping. You guys will have to make some decisive action here. Uh, Toad, I got us back into a corner. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're, um, gonna go to the meeting. <laughs> but we're, we're actually on the team's call with these guys. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm uh, say, yeah, uh, well, we gotta, we gotta do something about these people first. I'm gonna try, like, to do my, like, deepest growl, not growl, but like a bark or whatever yip sound a fox makes. We, we all know what sound a fox makes by the song. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I thought. When you, said, when you said go to the meeting, I thought you guys were going to try and, like, get the suit of armor to stand up and, like, and <laughs> walk them walk down to the street. I mean, they're like, it's the curse of the witch. The witch is coming back to haunt us. I want to just make, like, the most funkiest sound while in the suit of armor and hope that it echoes out and, like, the suit of armor, like, distorts it enough to scare them away. <laughs> All right, Fox, give me a fierce roll. This is going to be uh, challenging, and we're going to keep a sense of danger. Fierce, that's a five plus two, that's a seven. Ah, just under, so challenging is eight. Ah. You attempt to growl and try and scare them off, and at first they kind of take a step back, and then they're like, is that little fox? Is that little cute little fox in there? Yeah, it, because that didn't work. You know how, like, toads, like, bark? Yes. I'm going to try and do that to throw them off. If they think we're a fox, then that's going to be a completely different the sound than they're expecting. All right, so give me um, Fierce as well, because you're trying to scare them. We'll call that basic, because just the sheer difference in sound is, is already aiding to the ability to kind of mess with them. Okay, six. Basic is seven. Fuck. A point of danger for Toad. The other guy says, that's not a fox. They draw their weapons. They unsheath little daggers from their hips, and they say, ball beast. And one of them comes over and hits the suit of armor, and the suit of armor tumbles down the hallway a little bit. And you guys are all just jostled and rolling around inside. The people who were going, whatever meeting, were they headed down this way, or where were they going? They were going down this hallway. You're not sure which door, but they were going down this hallway. I'm going to grab my toad friend and just bounce. Yeah, that's what I'd like to do. Try to just outrun them and hopefully find a place I can hide. So we're going to call danger. If Fox is grabbing toad, or Toad is hanging on to Fox. We're gonna do like we did earlier. We're gonna get a fierce roll from Toad and maybe a quick roll from Fox as uh, Toad hangs on to Fox and Fox tries to outpace these individuals and they've all got their daggers drawn. Toad, it's been an honor serving with you. <laughs> that, yeah, that's a three. <laughs> oh, mine was, a, my quick was a 10. So nine, nine plus one. Toad gets another point of danger. How many points of danger do you have now, Toad? Yeah, that should just be two. 
So Fox felines out of the suit of armor and around back into the lobby and is able to kind of take shelter before these folks see where he went. But as he runs out of the suit of armor, Fox kind of like takes a sharp turn and Toad goes flying and hits the wall and back out down onto the floor, landing right in front of these three townsfolk. And Toad is looking up at them and they're looking down at Toad and they just yell, Earth Toad! I'm oblivious to Toad falling off and I'm like down the hallway saying, we got him, ha suckers! You'll never catch Fox and Toad! <laughs> uh, Spider, if you're still up there, witness this bizarre bed folding, sheet folding thing. Um, what do you got going on? I'm going to take a mental note and think, if I had Fox up here, I can make some excellent drama. But I'm going to have to get out of the room and I want to go into like the main hallway. If the bed chamber, they're going all over that, someone was important. It was either the magistrate or whatever the fuck he's called. The Baron. No, the Baron. Or it's going to be for the witch hunter. Either or. This is good news for me. And you hear this loud ruckus downstairs. You hear the flattering and clanging of metal voices going back and forth like, Oh, the cross witch! It's stupid witch! Some growling and what you think sounds like a, a very angry toad barking as you enter the upstairs hallway. Oh, things that will not concern me at all, ever. <laughs> I'm climbing on the ceiling. Where am I? I just exited that room. So there's a long hallway extending both left and right. And in the center opens up to like a large staircase that kind of splits down two sides and goes downstairs. Along each corridor of the hallway left and right, there's just like more doors. And you see a rather rotund, well-dressed gentleman coming out of one of the rooms. He's heading down the hallway towards the staircase. He just goes, I run the best meetings all the time meetings i am the best <laughs> i have the best words everybody loves my meetings he's got the tito dust skin tone he's trailing like a red garment behind him off of his shoulders he's heading towards the staircase i want to be above the staircase when he's getting there and i want to cast my spell of speak human when he gets there roll me the d10 with no bonus for the spell and there's danger present when casting your spell that's a two so you have two points of danger and i rolled two <laughs> what you can assume is the baron he's sort of coming down the hallway and you're on the ceiling and you cast this spell speak human what is it that you were trying to say to him the witch hunter does not enjoy your meetings he thinks they're dumb he hates you <laughs> <laughs> he just puts up with you because he likes your money not you he thinks your meetings are trash. And um, he looks up and he sees the spider talking to him. And he captures you in a jar. Picks you up and puts you in a little pickle jar. And he says, everybody loves money. And he puts you in his pocket. <laughs> so you have been captured. We'll say that your character is not indisposed, but there's not a whole lot you can do currently in this jar. I'm building a nest at this point. I I I'm, I'm just like like using my spider silk to just building a nest. The story that we're not going to hear is like him trying to convince everyone that the spider can actually talk. <laughs> so currently toad is on the floor looking up at these three individuals so toad what are you doing in this situation you're sort of in trouble are there any plants in this uh like in this hallway or in this house yeah we'll say there's a large cactus there's a couple large cactuses lining the walls of this hallway perfect i would like to ask plant growth to make those grow to like an exorbitant size to hopefully prick these guys and get them kind of like, what the fuck is that? You know? <laughs> oh, God, that pricks. Danger involved. Cast your spell a straight D10. Eight. Perfect. They are seemingly about to lunge at you, just yelling, Earth Toad. You're on your back and you just go, Prop. and the cactuses just in a flash grow 10 times their size. The hallway is now filled with the spiky protrusions of these cactuses all overgrown in this obstacle course of pins and needles. And three gentlemen all get sort of punched and pinned against the wall. And they're struggling to kind of free themselves from the cactus that's now punched them. So it's probably about this time I've been running and I'm like, oh man, we really showed them hot toad. Toad? Toad? Yeah, I imagine you peer down the hallway and there's Toad laying on the ground. Toad! Uh, yeah, I'm running back from my buddy. So you head down the hallway as Baron Von Trump descends the stairs down into the lobby. And as you're running down the hallway, um, at the very end of the hallway, you see a sign that says, Meeting here, noon o'clock. Oh, that sign says. Oh, true. Uh, <laughs> but there's a doggy door. Oh, nice. Can I outpace the Baron and pick up Toad and go through the doggy door? 
Yeah, so as you're going down the hall, the Baron is just now descending the stairs. So you've got a couple paces on him already. So you butt through the doggy door, and it's this long corporate-style table. And at one end is this one individual. It's, it's that cloaked figure whirling a dagger and, like, cleaning off some blood off of it onto his robe or whatever. It, there were cups of water for everybody attending the meeting. He drank all of them and knocked, knocked the cups onto the floor. Oh, good, good, good. No water. What a dick. Yeah, and he's, he's got his feet propped up, and he says, I couldn't be late again trying to get a coffee. And he's just... um spinning his blade around. He, he hasn't noticed you guys. Okay, um, and I do have Toad with me, correct? Yes. Hmm. Is there, like, a, a tablecloth on the table? Like, if we go under, we're gonna be easily seen? Yeah, there's, like, a runner going from end to end. It's, like, a long table. I'm gonna sneak under there, and I'm gonna try and, like, wait till, like, maybe he sits himself right or not. Uh, either I'm going for his ass or his groin. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I'm gonna cast my spell Make Flame. Make the balls. You guys are able to make your way into the table on scene, and you're sitting there and you're watching him. He's just sort of propped up. He doesn't really shift too much, but his legs are propped up on the table, like the bottom of his ass is kind of exposed under the table. So you want to make flame from under him? Ah, uh, yes. Give me a D10 roll straight with danger present. That is a six, which is higher than my danger. Challenge was not simple, per se. That's going to be a fail. You get one point of danger. You produce a flame from under this gentleman's ass. He quickly, like, jumps up, and his robe catches a blaze, but he throws it off of him onto the table. <laughs> Two things happen. One, the table catches fire. Nice. Okay. Two, you notice that he is wearing, like, a nice button-up shirt with a name tag that says Steve Witch Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> Little on the nose. So now the room is catching a light, and now and you have gained a point of danger. Is he trying to run out of the room? He's more concerned with himself and any singe marks he might have. He wants to look pristine, and he doesn't seem to be as particular about what the world around him looks like as he is about himself. So he's sort of brushing himself off. He says, well, um, that was quite odd. <laughs> Did he uh, drop the knife? Uh, no, he still has the knife. Damn it. All right, can I fire his crotch again? You can. Danger presence, a D10. This will be challenging, especially now because he's already been lit on fire once. Yeah, but not in the crotch. He kind of knows something out of the norm is happening here. Yeah, you fucked with the wrong witch. No, that is a four. Yeah, that's a four. Okay, another point of danger for Fox. How many points of danger are you up to, Fox? Uh, so with that, it goes up to four. So four points of danger, and I imagine you go to produce flame again. The blood rushes to your head as you're trying to produce this flame, and your whiskers just sizzle, and no flame is produced. But as you kind of are making this motion, this upward motion to catch this guy on fire, he notices you. He sees you from under the table as he's dusting off his knees and his hands and stuff. He's like, Wait a minute now, I know you. And uh, you notice he's wearing these thick framed square glasses and he, he pushes them up because they're, they're a little too large. I know you, you belong to that goddamn witch. And he pulls up his glasses. Uh, as he does so, uh, fire to the face. So four points of danger on the board. This is gonna be danger, a straight D10. As he tries a third time to catch this man on fire. This is like a 40% chance to win. This is bad. This is gonna be difficult. Why, he's right in front of me. But I, I think he's expecting it at this point. Yeah, but you, you can't dodge it that close. All right, we'll, we'll give it challenging. The same same rating as the last one. Yeah, it's still so, a fail. It's a seven. Okay, so you're up to five points of danger, which means I can keep. Which means I can keep rolling. I just imagine he gets down to your level. You're that damn witch. <laughs> you kind of get up on your hind legs and you put your paws on each side of his cheeks and you go to light flame again, <laughs> and your ears just sizzle. I bite his nose. He's actually going to have grabbed you. He grabs you by the scruff of your neck, and he's holding you up in the air. And he takes out his blade. Toad, do something. Can I try and use my tongue to, like, whack him in the eyes? Try and, like, blind him and recoil him back? Okay. Look him in the eyeball. So you're going to try and um, punch him in the eyeball or steal his glasses? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I want to punch him in the eyeball, I guess, first. Give me a fierce roll. We'll call that basic. Okay, so that's a nine on that one. Okay, that's a success. You extend your tongue in a code mouth punch and you smack him in the eye. Oh, what the, what, what, in, what in the hell? He looks down with his good eye and he's like shouting on the ground for you, but he has since dropped Fox. Perfect. Did he drop his knife? 
He has not dropped his knife. Damn. Are there any plants in this room? <laughs> <laughs> there are much smaller cactuses, like tabletop succulents and stuff. Perfect. There happened to be one behind him. Can I actually grab one of them and try and bash him in the head with it with my tongue? A lot of tongue work. Are you a frog or chameleon? <laughs> We're going to call this challenging as this is like a multi-step thing you're trying to do. Perfect. We'll call it fierce as well. So you're trying to grab this potted succulent with your tongue, get in a position, and hit him in the head with it. Pretty much. Okay. Uh, uh, sick. Yeah, that is a fail. This would have had danger. You will be up one point of danger. That's three. You grab the pot, get in position, and you flail your tongue to catch him in the head with the succulent. The potted succulent escapes your tongue's grasp and actually strikes Fox. Oh, shit. <laughs> the fox is concussed. <laughs> the fox, you have just gotten struck with a potted succulent. All right. Steve the witch hunter is trying to go for Fox again. Still hasn't dropped his knife, huh? No, but he pulls out a second knife, so he's got two knives. Oh, what's he two knives for? Damn, dual wielding. All right, fire crotch. He says, oh, well, it's not in my nature to be an asshole like this. And he goes, wait a minute. And then he starts laughing. He goes, yes, it is. It's great. He's going to try and come after Fox. And you're Fox, you're going to do fire crotch again? Well, it's either that or bite him, and I don't think my odds are good either way. All right. Give me your spell. Danger, a straight D10. You have five points of danger. So. Has my odds gotten any better? Because he's had an eye out. We'll, we'll dial it back to basic. Okay, because that's a seven. <laughs> seven succeeds. So... You have caught his crotch ablaze. Then I have what? <laughs> he kind of falls back onto the chair he was once sitting in, and he's trying to pat out his crotch, and he reaches for some water, but he realizes that he drank it all, and there's there's no water around, and <laughs> oh, yeah. he's sort of writhing in pain and embers, but he still has his eyeballs intact. Uh, has he dropped the knives? We'll say having caught on fire, he threw the knives as he pat. I'm going to step on one of them and then slide it over to Toad, and pick the other one up with my mouth. <laughs> okay. And I'm about to go stab this guy and poke out his eyes. Give me, I would argue, fierce, but feel free to pitch whatever for this maneuver. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with fierce and just stabbing him blindly. Well, this would be for the maneuver of getting a knife yourself and sliding one knife over to Toad. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, quick and slide the same for me. That's why I say clever and quick. I would take clever for that maneuver. Four plus two, that's a six. We'll say that was a pretty simple thing. I mean, it didn't really require too much. Just like that, Toad and I are in a gang. Mm -hmm. You notice for a second that Toad has this really sick tattoo on, on the side of his face, all of a sudden. <laughs> gang symbols. <laughs> <laughs> and like a teardrop below my eye disappears. <laughs> and you both look at each other and nod in agreement like, you know what needs to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Time to shake this bitch. <laughs> I'll take a fierce roll from both of you as you're going to take these knives and try and cut out his eyes. Or are you going to try and kill him first? Well, yeah, but we need to get the eyes too. Ooh, zero is 10, right? Yep. Yeah, I rolled a 10 too, plus two. Wow, nice. <laughs> All right, so yeah, you guys both look at each other in this moment, and if this were a scene from a movie, it, it lingers just a couple seconds too long. You guys all of a sudden have these gang tattoos. Toad, <laughs> flow motion, bounces, pushes his hind legs off the ground. You see him in midair, launching himself toward the witch hunter's face. You see Fox do a similar position, like a gymnast in their final stretch. And you guys are both leaping. You get so close to one another in perfect synchronicity. Almost the same perfect order as the whole town outside of this room. Yeah, meanwhile, there's like a gangster rap like playing behind us going, Frog and Toad. Oh, Frog and Toad. <laughs> yes, there is a heavy bass in the background with women with large derrieres shaking them in the back. Frog and Toad. <laughs> Frog and Toad. <laughs> Slow motion, the tip of these blades penetrate the witch hunter's eyeballs. Blood squirts out and viscera squirts out from behind and the sides of his eyes. And the eyeballs both at the same time pop up into the air and land on the floor in front of you. And the witch hunter writhes in pain for a moment, quickly slows down to a motionless corpse. Fuck yeah. Yeah, I, I get towed back on my head, pick up the two eyeballs in my mouth. And I like to think the flames are just really building up as we like dash out of the doggy door. Like there's like flames behind us. Just as like the Baron's about to like walk into the room. Yeah, I imagine um, during this whole fight, the Baron was standing there and had the maids chopping down the cactuses in the hallway. So he'd like go to this meeting. 
So they had just finished, so they're sweeping up all bits of cactus. You guys bound out of the doggy door, smoke billowing behind you, right between Baron Von Trump's leg. And he goes, what in the hell is happening? What is this? Give me one last roll from Bach. Give me a quick roll as you pass by Baron Von Trump and try and knock the jar holding Spider out from his pockets. Fox and two. Fox and two. Yes. Okay, so that is a uh, quick. That's eight plus one. That's a nine. So you guys come bounding out. Frog is holding on to the scruff of your neck, his legs again billowing behind him like a flagpole. I imagine Fox kind of like jumps up and Toad kicks the glass jar out of his out of uh, Von Trump's pocket. The glass shatters on the ground and Spider is free. And the three of you are able to escape town. The building is ablaze as you uh, leave the gate. The town is in panic and you make it back. You pop the eyeballs on your uh, witch's chest. All of her wounds peel back, much like Wolverine, sort of coming back to life. You hear, like, snapping and cracking as rigor mortis reverts and her muscles gain mobility again. And she goes, I always knew I could count on you. I'm going to, like, paw at her leg and just be like, yo, spider money. <laughs> spider salutes. Yeah, so that, that's the witch is dead. It's meant to be kind of zany and kind of crazy and fun. Hey everyone, this is Josh from 5D RPG. Just asking, begging, pleading that if you like what you heard on this session, give us a like and subscribe for more tabletop role-playing goodness. Let us know in the comments what we should be playing next, whether it's a D&D module, one-page RPG, or something completely different.